We are now on the 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And today we are reminded that part of our duty as Christians is to share the good news with others. The task of preaching the gospel is not confined to the 12 apostles. It is a mission given to all of Jesus' disciples. We rejoice not so much in our success, but in the Lord sharing with us his saving work and in having a sure reward with him in heaven. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. At the time, the Lord appointed 72 others whom he sent ahead of him in pairs to every town and place he intended to visit. He said to them, The harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Go on your way. Behold, I am sending you like lambs among wolves. Carry no money bag, no sack, no sandals, and greet no one along the way. Into whatever house you enter, first say peace to this household. If a peaceful person lives there, your peace will rest on him. But if not, it will return to you. Stay in the same house and eat and drink what is offered to you, for the laborer deserves his payment. Do not move about from one house to another. Whatever town you enter and they welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick in it and say to them, The kingdom of God is at hand for you. I tell you, it will be more tolerable for Sodom on that day than for that town. The 72 returned rejoicing and said, Lord, even the demons are subject to us because of your name. Jesus said, I have observed Satan fall like lightning from the sky. Behold, I have given you the power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and upon the full force of the enemy, and nothing will harm you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice because the spirits are subject to you. But rejoice, because your names are written in heaven. Sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In 1717, when Louis XIV of France died, his body lay in a golden coffin and was placed at the middle of the sanctuary of the cathedral with only one candle on it. And why is this? It was because during his lifetime, King Louis XIV called called himself the Sun King, and his court was the most magnificent in Europe. And to dramatize his greatness, he wanted that on, when, when he died, he wanted that his funeral will be in the cathedral, and that there is only one dimly, that the, the, the entire cathedral was dimly lit by only one candle that was placed over his coffin. And his instructions were carried out. And on the day of his funeral, as the bishop entered, he approached the coffin and he got the candle and he blew out the flame and he said, Only God is great. Only God is great. My dear sisters and brothers in Christ, this is the lesson that Jesus tries to teach his disciples and to teach us today, that only God is great. We are not great and we are only here by the mercy of God. Jesus had sent out his 72 disciples in today's gospel and he wanted them to go to the places that he was about to visit. 
And in today's gospel, we see them returning full of joy and satisfaction, and they had very exciting news. He said, they said, Lord, even the demons were subject to us in your name. They discovered that in Jesus' name, they were able to do the same things that Jesus did. They were able to cure the sick. They were able to exercise demons from those possessed by demons. And in reply, what did Jesus tell them? I saw Satan as lightning fall from heaven. And what does this statement mean? that the power of evil is being reversed and this was partly the doing of his disciples working in his name. And he further assures them, I give you the power to tread on snakes and scorpions over the power of the enemy. Nothing at all will be able to hurt you. In other words, the statement, I saw Satan as lightning fall from the heaven, is an assurance, an affirmation that yes, you were doing great work. That it's like Jesus saying, yes, while you were preaching and healing, I was here and I saw Satan's influence being pushed back whenever you spread the good news. But there is another purpose for this statement. Some biblical scholars say that this is an introduction to what he was about to say in the second part of today's gospel. It was a warning against unhealthy pride because the cause of Satan's fall from the heaven was pride. In this case, the phrase could mean Jesus was telling his disciples, it's good that you have experienced the power of my salvation, but be very careful. If you forget that this power comes not from yourselves, but from on high, you may fall into the trap of believing that all of this was because of you and not because of God, which was what the devil, what Lucifer thought when he fell from the grace of the Lord. In, other, in either case, my dear sisters and brothers in Christ, the lesson remains the same. Our lives are not about ourselves, but about God. It is about the God who sustains and prospers the work of our hands. We are not the ones who are great, but the God who does His work in us. And we are only here by the grace of this God. Earlier in the gospel, Jesus tells His disciples, God, go on your way. Behold, I am sending you like lambs among wolves. Carry no bag, no sack, no sandals, and greet no one along the way. And in an earlier verse, he even tells his disciples not to carry even a walking stick or have any money on them. Just imagine, the roads of ancient Palestine were rocky and uneven. And without a walking stick, one risks losing his balance as you walk along the rocky roads and you may suffer a sprained ankle or even a broken leg. And how are the, how are the disciples supposed to defend themselves against the wild animals that prowl in the roads that they were about to, that they were about to tread? And aside from that, they needed a stick to defend themselves from the bandits who prey on pilgrims, on travelers along the road. But why? Why did Jesus tell his disciples not to bring any, not to bring anything, not even sandals for their feet? It is perhaps to show that to show the people in the villages that, that they were about to visit that it is the, that it is the disciples' power that came, that the power that came from within them and not all the things that they have with them that has made them effective and powerful. 
It is a prophetic sign that it was God who prospers the work of the disciples and not what their possessions. And at the same time, it is a reminder to the disciples that they were carrying out the work of the Lord and not theirs. And it is the Lord's, and because it is the Lord's work, He will make sure that the work will succeed. And so, my dear sisters and brothers in Christ, when the disciples return to Jesus, they rejoice, but not because. Jesus says, don't rejoice because you have triumphed over demons, because that, that could lead to false pride. Sabi ni Jesus, do not rejoice because the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice because your names are written in heaven. They are to rejoice because they have permitted themselves to be chosen and commissioned by God, that they are sent on mission, that they share in the mission of Jesus. They are to rejoice because they have been entrusted, that they have been trusted by the Lord in living the risk and the suffering rejection and knowing that they will prevail. They come back to Jesus, transform these 72 disciples because they realize that no longer do they live for themselves, but for God who keeps them close to His love. And so, my dear sisters and brothers in Christ, let us remember in our successes in life, it is not because of your, because, because of your skill. It is not because of your possession. It is not because of your power. Everything happens by the grace of God. And hopefully, being able to see this, we learn to live our lives not for our greater glory, but always for the greater glory of God. Amen. And that is also an appeal to the young men here. If you have, if you have, uh, if you have uh, no girlfriend, maybe you might want to consider the Society of Jesus. And the girls, no, if you have problems with your boyfriends, just send them to us. We will solve your problem. We will make them Jesuits, no? So we are in need of vocations, and we pray, no? The Lord said in today's gospel, the harvest is great, but the laborers are few. We need more laborers in the field. And um, we invite you to be Jesuits. And who are the Jesuits? We try to live by the motto, Ad Maiorem Dei Gloriam. And that is what I'd like to share with you also for your homework. In today's gospel, Jesus says, Pride, no? Our pride ang kalaban natin, no? Our bloated egos ang kalaban natin. Even if we do good work, we may tend to think that the good work prospered because of our efforts and because of our talents, no? I always remember this story about a teacher who came to me and says, Look at this watch that I am wearing. It is an expensive watch given by a parent. Why? Because I did wonders on their son na ang son nila bumabagsak, may job nagbubulakbol and now he is really achieving and is doing well in school and the teacher says it is because he he did wonders on the child but i but uh, i did not tell him no but upon thinking he says but who says it is you who worked wonders on the child it is actually Christ who was working not only on you, but also on the other teachers that he had had through the years, the other people that this, this student has, has met, the parents who cared for their child, even despite no, the unconditional love of the parents. So it could not be that the success that we enjoy could not be because of us alone. As I have said earlier, we are here purely Dahil sa awa ng Diyos, we are here by the mercy of God. It is God who sustains us. It is God who prospers the work of our hands. So, 
I would, we, at, this is an invitation to live by the motto, Ad Maiorem Dei Gloriam, all for the greater glory of God. It is an acknowledgement that everything comes from the Lord and everything must therefore be returned to the Lord, that everything must be done not for our glory, but for the glory of God. And so for your assignment, no? I always tell the students in Ateneo, in Ateneo, this is the motto we live by. We are number three. We are not number one. We are number three. Number one is the Lord. Number two, other people. We are only number three. So maybe for this week, try to look into our lives and see, no? What areas in our lives where we want to be number one? We think we are number one, no? Is it because we think that we are so good, we are so intelligent, that we think that we are talented, we are rich, we are powerful, we can do so many things, we can do whatever we like? These are temptations to pride which led the fall of the first angel. And so we offer that to the Lord and ask the Lord, to humble us, to grant us the grace of humility.